I'm Miranda Khan. We begin this special report with some breaking news, sad news right now. Uh, former President Donald Trump's first wife, Ivana Trump, has sadly passed away at the age of 73. She, of course, is the mother of Trump's three eldest uh, children. The family has released a statement uh, as well as uh, President Trump. Uh, basically uh, saying this, this from her sons, it is with deep sadness that we announce the passing of our beloved mother. Our mother was an incredible woman, a force of business, a world-class athlete, a radiant beauty, and a caring mother and friend. It's believed that she died of natural causes or reports that uh, a call was sent to Manhattan uh, in regards to cardiac arrest. Uh, President Trump saying, I'm very saddened to inform all of those that loved her, of which there are many, that Ivana Trump has passed away at her home in New York City. Our sincerest, uh, sincerest condolences go out to the Trump family. And we'll continue to follow that. Uh, in other news, though, uh, we're going to start things off in this special report with your money, or should I say lack thereof, because let's get real, that's the number one issue that's affecting all of us. Inflation, as you already know, just topped 9% for the first time in 40 years this week, and most of you are wondering, how much longer will all of this last? Well, it's hard for anyone to tell when the White House can't seem to acknowledge it, let alone take any ounce of responsibility for you having less money in your pocket. Case in point, here's part of a statement that the Biden administration put out in regards to that number, basically saying, quote, Today's data does not reflect the full impact of nearly 30 days of decreases in gas prices that have reduced the price at the pump by about 40 cents since mid-June. Those savings are, it goes on to say, are providing important breathing room for American families and other commodities like weed have fallen sharply since this report. Well, President Trump, uh, you knew he was going to seize that moment, and he did. He went to his own social media platform, True Social, saying this. Inflation just hit another 40-year high of 9.1%, which is terrible for our country, he says. Fuel prices are up 60%. Airfare, 34. How can people survive this? How can businesses survive this? Our country is so weak right now because of the radical left. Democrats have no clue what they are doing. All they want to do is get Trump and they are willing to destroy our nation to do that. Joining us now to weigh in on all things your money, I want to welcome in our beautiful and talented panel for today's special report. We have Turning Point USA contributor, host of Freedom Papers, Morgan Ziegers. Good to see you. Thank you. Also with the CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. Good to see you as well. And can <laughs> Yes, and consultant also joining us, uh, Caroline Winchester. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you. So this is a response to an inflation report that came in at nearly 15% higher than when Biden took office. So I, I don't need to tell people this, but, you know, eggs cost 33% more than they did a year ago. Coffee, which I live off of, which many Americans do up 15%, meat products are up double digits, airfare for flights, 34%, never mind the huge spikes in energy prices and Biden's messages. I'm sorry, but those numbers are out of date. It's not that bad. Melissa, you study the numbers day in and day out. Uh, not that bad? I think the administration is trying to put a good spin on it because the price of gasoline has gone down a few pennies in the last month. But ultimately, I expect that prices of consumer goods are going to continue to rise. And I think we've talked about this before, Miranda. I don't think the real number is anything that they say because they take an aggregate of many different products. The reason that so many things are costing more, like you were talking about food, butter, milk, eggs, yeah. you know, everything that we buy is because how does it get to the grocery store? How does it get to your home? Even big items like wash machines and if you need a new stove, things like that. It gets to your home in a truck. It gets to the grocery stores in the truck. Everything that comes into New York City, I live in Manhattan, is delivered early in the morning in these big, massive truck trailers that come in in the morning. And, and diesel fuel has yeah. gone up 
so much. I mean, it's almost like double in the last 12 months. So there's a surcharge for that. And basically companies are passing that down onto the consumer and that will continue to happen until we get improved gasoline and diesel prices. And unfortunately, this administration, this isn't pro, uh, you know, American energy. And Melissa, I have to say, you did get it right there. What I think is interesting is, you know, they seem shocked by the rising numbers. And you've said for months now that you don't think the numbers are accurate, that they're way higher. So kudos to you. Um, yeah, I mean, Caroline, I saw you shaking your head there. Why, why do they seem to be so off the mark there, if you will? I mean, we've heard from you know, uh, the Fed there that they seem, oh yeah, we might have missed the mark there, and then here again they miss the mark, and then when they do, they're kind of downplaying it, saying, well, the numbers aren't really right. Uh, are the American people buying it? You know, thank you so much. Um, I really don't think they are, and I feel like I talk to business owners, regular American people every single day, and yeah. not only is everything at such a high price, much, much higher than it was just two years ago, even through um, the worst of a pandemic, there's no staff. I don't know where everybody went, but not only are things so expensive, but our services are worse. You can't, restaurants don't have wait staff, grocery stores. Yeah, it's stores weird. Have shelves. It's so bizarre. Yeah, Melissa, I, chime in here because I know you and I have talked about this before. Um, they keep saying unemployment's down and and then it's kind of confusing because inflation's really high and then we're still seeing businesses struggle to hire people. It, it can be a little confusing for people who aren't like, you know, experts, so-called experts like yourself. Well, here's the problem. A lot of people have left the workforce and they're not accounting for that in the unemployment number. And really the unemployment number, we're just back where we were before COVID, before the pandemic. So right. the administration keeps trying to put a positive spin on it. I get it, saying we added these jobs and we're at low level in employment. But their bottom line is, or uh, low levels of employment, but the bottom line is that, you know, we're just back to where we were. A lot of people left the workforce. A lot of people are deciding not to go to work now, which is a problem. And hey, I'm a great consumer. I love to buy things. I'm a shopper. I don't, I want good customer you service. You and me both. I call, I, if I call on the phone, I don't want to wait on the phone for two hours for somebody to answer a question for me. If I go to the store, I want, don't want to wait in line. I mean, I'll go to a grocery store in New York City and there'll be 10 lanes and there's two open because they can't get the staff. They can't right. get the people. I mean, they can't, I don't understand. Like, don't they figure, well, it's better off to just stay home and live off of subsidies, but it's not going to last. And the prices of things keep going up. And again, you've got to go out and work. You've got to work hard if you want to make something out of your life. Right. But I think lazy during COVID and that was the problem. Well, I want to just, you know, according to the Heritage Foundation, just to kind of put some of these numbers in perspective and Morgan, I want you to weigh in. So the average American worker, you know, when we talk about this rising inflation, 9.1% has lost, uh, you know, about $3,400 in annual income and for a family, well, then it's like double that. And, and, you know, they all tie this back whenever we hear the Biden administration back to this, the Putin price hike, the Putin price hike. But what has a lot of people confused, Morgan, at least I'm confused. I'm sure a lot of uh, real Americans, patriots that are watching the show are a little confused. You have the Biden administration uh, selling, uh, you know, barrels of oil to China. Uh, and working and, and begging OPEC multiple times to increase foreign oil production. Uh, he's obviously going to be meeting with Saudi Arabia's prince. It, it's a little it's a little confusing. Are you confused by all of it? Uh, I am not confused, but unfortunately, a lot of people that are on the later end of the millennial generation and especially Gen Z, they are very confused right now. So there's a few things here. I mean, I'm a homeowner. My home's in Texas. And I thought it was pretty hilarious today when I got a quote because my microwave broke and I got the quote for how much it would be to replace the microwave and then have someone come and install it. And I actually th looked at the number and thought, maybe I just don't need a microwave right now. <laughs> and so I yeah. Us are confronted with this like, whoa, 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 this was never something that I could put into my budget. And when you look at these kind of numbers of this 3000 uh, that we just saw, what's really crazy to me is there's a staggering amount of Americans that don't even have a thousand dollars in their emergency savings for something really bad that could potentially happen. And now we have these experts in Washington, D.C. that were telling us for the longest time, don't worry, this is transitory. Oh, wait, now it looks like you're going to need about five to six thousand dollars saved up to deal with inflation. Now back yeah. to that point of 
confusion, a lot of young people have been sold a lot of lies over the last five or six years as they've entered politics. They've really only experienced President Trump's presidency, and we had a great economic series of successes under him. And now we're facing economic downturn. And for the first time, it's no longer just talking about gendered pronouns and transgender issues and all of these crazy woke things that we're talking about relating to culture. But young people that lean to the left are finally having to face what it's like to deal with economic downturn. And I think it's really up to us to explain to them why we're struggling so much and not let the left dictate the conversation and put out distraction propaganda. And you brought up that $1,000 figure. I mean, most Americans on average are spending, uh, what, $500 more a month, uh, Melissa? Um, people don't didn't just all of a sudden get a $500 a month raise, uh, and that doesn't, you know, take into account at some places are even dealing with higher prices. You know, we were talking about 14.5% when it came to rent. In some places, like in the home state where I live, Florida, it's up 60%. That's pretty tough for some people. Ladies, I'm going to ask you uh, to stick around, and I also want to let our viewers that are watching right now uh, to weigh in on this conversation. Join the RAV family. This is about you. We want to hear how you're managing through all this. Um, you know, how, how much is it costing you? What are you doing? What are you having to cut back on? What are your thoughts on this? You can do so by finding us at Gitter. Join the RAV family. All right, we are going to be right back with our panel. Still had a story that just literally sent shockwaves across the nation and has Americans' stomachs, for obvious reasons, in knots. We're going to discuss that next.